Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be creating this material on a sphere. I'll just go out of my camera. I've got three area lights in the scene. Lighting is extremely important whenever you're creating materials. But if you check the description or the top comment, you can go ahead and download the studio setup so that you can follow along without any issues. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start by going to create shader, Cinema 40 Octane, and we're going to be creating an Octane composite material. So drag and drop that onto your sphere, go to your plugins and make sure your live viewer is open as well. And just send this over to the live viewer, then double click on that material and open up the node editor. An Octane composite material allows you to blend multiple materials together so you can create really really complex materials just using this type of material. You can see we can combine three together. We'll only be using material slot one but if you want to you can use material slot two and three to add some additional detail later on. That'll be completely up to you but for the tutorial we'll just be using material slot one. Okay, so in order to attach any nodes to an Octane composite, we can't use an Octane material. You'll see if I drag and drop this out here and try and connect it, I can't connect this to anything. So I'm going to delete that. We can only connect sub-materials to an Octane composite. So I'm going to drag that out and connect this to material one. So this is the only node that works in conjunction with the Octane composite. Now if I go ahead and select the sub-material and go to basic, you can see that the sub-material has all of the different material types that are also present on the regular Octane material. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is select my sub-material. I'm going to go to the specular and put this value on 0.09. So the specular is going to control how much gloss and shininess is going to be present on this material. But I'll have better control over that later on when we connect one of the noise generators to the roughness. But for now, just put the specular on 0.09. Alright, so I want you to pay attention to the left hand side. You can see there's a whole bunch of different colors over here. We're only interested in the green color. So everything that's green is called a generator and generators generate different patterns and effects for your material. So this entire material is going to be created using a noise generator. So I'm going to drag and drop this out into my scene and connect this to the diffuse. So you'll notice there's some additional coloring on our sphere over here. We can see some gradients. Go ahead and select the noise and you'll notice over here we get some new options. So there's four different noise types. You guys can play around with this and see what type of effects you can get. But we're going to be using chips. Okay, and just to explain these settings over here, the octaves and the omega work in conjunction with each other to determine how detailed this pattern is going to be. So if I decrease the omega, I get much sharper lines and if I start increasing it, I get a lot more detail on my pattern. And then the gamma controls how much of this pattern is actually going to be visible. So if I decrease this, you can see it's less visible. If I increase that, a lot, of, a lot more of the pattern is visible. And with contrast, think of it as taking a gradient and clamping those values all the way up to create a much more or harsher separation between values. So this also really comes in handy. So I've got a, uh, I've got values that I've already determined that I want to use to create this material. So for the octaves, I'm going to put that on 7. My omega is going to be on 0 0.54. My gamma is going to be on 0 0.38. And my contrast is going to be clamped all the way up to 30.39. So this is the type of effect that you should get. Okay, now another extremely useful node over here is under these maroon colored icons, which are mapping nodes, and we're going to be using a gradient. So drag and drop that. You'll see if I hover over this line, it turns orange. So if I let go right now, it automatically connects all of these nodes together. So it connects the noise to the gradient and the gradient to the diffuse. So this gradient node allows me to add additional color onto our sphere or onto our, our material. Now I've got my own values that I'm going to be using here, but I want to make sure I just left click over here to create another one of these. So there's going to be four of them in place. I'm going to clamp this a little bit closer. And then you guys can have creative freedom over here. You can choose what colors you want to be in different segments. That's completely up to you. Or you can follow along and use the exact same colors that I'll be using. Okay, so for this first node over here, I'm going to double click on that just to bring this up, my HSV sliders. So I'm going to put this value on 30, this value on 69, and this one on 20. Okay, so it's going to give me a bit of a darker brown. I'm going to double click over here. This one's going to be on 27. 
55 and 10. All right, so it's different uh, shades of brown that I'm using. This one's going to be on 30, 15, and 26. And then our last one over here is going to be on 30, 52, and 23. So this is going to give us that brown, muddy feel. So right now it obviously doesn't look like much, but obviously we're still going to be adjusting this so we get to that final result. Now let's go ahead and use another generator. So we're going to be using another noise. Okay, and this one's going to be connected to the bump. So this is going to add some really nice surface detail onto this. Let me just make sure I'm sending my scene back here. You can already see that there's a breakup in the surface of our material just by attaching this noise to the bump. So let's select that noise. Let's change the type to chips. I'm going to put my octaves on 7, my omega on 0 0.64, my gamma on 0 0.38, and my contrast on 30.39. There we go. So now you can see, let me just make this a bit bigger. Now you can see that we're really starting to get that muddy soil looking aesthetic just by plugging this into the bump. So you can control how much uh, clumps of mud you want to be visible on here just by adjusting this gamma. You can see you can have more clumps towards the center, but because it's just generating this procedurally, it's placing it also in random locations, which is pretty cool. It adds that randomization and a variety to the material, but you'll just control that with the gamma. But I'm actually going to put this back on 0 0.38. Okay, so we'll be using one more noise generator, so just drag and drop that, and this generator is going to basically drive our displacement on our material. So select the noise, let's change our type to chips. And over here I'm going to put my octaves on 7, my omega on 0 0.16, my gamma on 0 0.52, and my contrast on 16.7. Okay, so the noise is set up for our displacement, but you'll notice if I drag and drop this onto the displacement on our composite, it won't connect. And that's very simple because we have to actually set up two nodes, right? You first need to drag and drop a displacement over here and connect that to the displacement. Now you'll notice if I connect the noise to the displacement right now, right, and send this over to our live viewer, nothing is happening. And that's because we need one more node. So just scroll up here. We need a node that's called a baking texture. So this bakes our noise into this baking texture node that gets applied onto the displacement that makes it visible. So if I just drag and drop this and connect it in between those two, there we go. We've got our displacement visible on our material. You'll notice that the overall quality of this displacement looks really bad right now. And that's because we need to select the displacement and under level of detail, you can see it's on 256 by 256. So crank that all the way up to 4K and you're going to get a much better result. All right, there we go. Let me just make that bigger. So we get a much better result right now. And there we go. We've got this cracked ground with all of this mud and soil. And then we can control the height of our displacement over here by the height. So I'm going to be putting this value. Maybe let's say we'll just put it on 6. There we go. Okay, remember what I said earlier about controlling the specular of where it should appear? Because right now we have this universal amount of specular that's applied onto everything. There's no separation. Everything looks moist and damp. And maybe that's the aesthetic you're going for. But we can control this by plugging our noise into the roughness. So I'm going to take this noise for displacement and plug that directly into the roughness. So now you'll notice areas that are white on our displacement have become almost like a diffuse, but everything else that's black has this glossiness applied to it. Now we still get some of that glossiness and specular aesthetic applied to the entire material, but it doesn't look like how it looked before where it was universal and on everything. So this creates a separation. And to have better control over this, let's use a gradient. So I'll drag and drop the gradient over here. And now if I start clamping up this black value, I'll also get some more of the glossiness.
present on our material. So this is a nice way to control the specular highlights. And if I invert this, if I bring the white in the front, right, it makes it, all of this glossy. And now everything that's underneath is completely dry. So this looks like a diffuse material. So you can control what's glossy and what's shiny just with this gradient slider. It's fantastic and it's a really awesome technique to control the glossiness of a material. And if you want even more control over these specular highlights, go ahead and plug the gradient from this noise into the specular. All right now we're going to get some crazy effects over here. You can even create stylized specular highlights. So I'm going to create, I'm going to grab the gradient again and just play around with this. So maybe if I make this, let's say a darker gray, let's just pay attention to this. Now, now you can see like the top section of the soil is completely dry and the bottom section is really, really wet. So this is a very cool method for controlling the specular highlights as well. So play around with that, see what you can come up with. This gradient is a fantastic way of controlling the intensity of the highlights. Okay, so we've created our cracked muddy material. You could see just how simple that was and how powerful this node editor is. There's honestly not that many nodes that are driving this type of material and it looks like a really, really complex material. But you can see you've gone through the process. It's really not that difficult. And because this is procedural, I can go back at any moment. Let's say I don't like the brown on here. So I'll just select this. Maybe I want this to be purple. All right, send that back to the live viewer. Now we've got purple soil, right? Let, let it update. Now we've got purple soil, so you can create something that's stylized, right? Maybe I don't like how this displacement looks. I can change my material type to turbulence. So everything is procedural. So there we go. We've got a completely different effect right now. Really, really cool that you can control this and do this in a non-destructive workflow. I think it's fantastic to set up procedural materials. It just allows you to customize and create endless variations. All right, so that's the end of the tutorial. You know how to create this material from start to finish. You can see just how powerful the node editor is uh, with Octane Render. Just by using some basic nodes, you can create a material that looks really, really complex. But I want you guys to go back, experiment, play with these sliders and see what they do. I know if I go to the noise editor over here, okay, and I play around with the contrast. So if I move this contrast down, pay attention to how the soil changes over here. Right, we no longer have very sharp um, points on the soil. Right, this makes it look a little bit more even. We can bring it all the way up and get really drastic uh, results. So procedural uh, shader is never final because you can always tweak it. And that's the beauty of creating materials like this is that they are very, very customizable. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. I truly appreciate the support and goodbye.